Hi everybody and welcome to another video. Today I'm in Crab Wood in Winchester. It's very very busy. There's lots of dog walkers. There's some weird noises coming from behind. Um, I hope it's a deer because if you've seen one of my previous videos I've been desperately trying to get footage or a photo of a deer so let's hope it is. I suspect it's something more sinister. I'm surrounded by some really gnarly looking trees but in today's episode I'm going to be sharing five lessons from one of my all-time favorite books. This is of course one of my nine recommended books for managers and leaders in the video above and I'm going to share five lessons and I'll be honest it was really hard finding just five lessons from such a good book. I mean, you may as well just dip this entire book in highlighter fluid because it's so good. So before we jump into the five, I just thought I'd give a little bit of background about John Wooden. He was a legendary basketball coach and manager at a superb winning track record. And of course, almost everything that he taught in terms of basketball is translatable into leading any sort of team, no matter who you are, no matter what industry. If you're leading a team, you're managing a team, there's a huge amount we can learn from people who've done this in other industries. And this book is just all of those lessons sort of condensed into one and one of the core essence I guess the principle behind John Wooden was that he didn't really care too much if he won or he lost what he cared about was whether people performed at their best if they performed at their best and they lost then so be it there's always somebody better than us but if they won but they didn't perform their best then he didn't see that as a victory a victory is being your best doing your best and he always said make every day your masterpiece, which is essentially making sure that every day you're trying your hardest, you're doing your best, you're working on improving. And that's really one of the core philosophies behind cultivated management, is we can always get better and we should always bring our best self to work. Let's jump into the five, as you can see. I've done some funky little marking here with post-it notes. It's not very glamorous, but I'm going to jump into the five right now. Lesson number one is about making greatness attainable by all. It's very, very common in organizations to have this thing called a hero culture where there's one or two people who are basically holding the business together. You can rely on them to get stuff done, but they often burn themselves out. They're the solo person that comes in and makes all the change. Now, one of the problems with that is that, you know, basketball, like most businesses, is a bit of a team effort. Everybody should be pulling their weight. Now, it's quite common when I do management consultancy is to find managers who are not addressing low performance and they are allowing the hero culture to proliferate through the business. There's three or four people in a team that are doing all of the work and there's maybe two or three people who aren't. We have to all pull together to attain that greatness. We shouldn't be letting low performers bring down the team. Now, one way to do this is, of course, to deal with low performance, is to spot those behaviors and that work output that isn't contributing to the good of the team and to address that, to deal with it, to put in place a coaching plan, to offer feedback. Now, these are all things that managers should be doing, but they're quite hard. And of course, I've covered a number of these things in other videos, but we should not be letting low performers bring down the team because great Greatness, real greatness is achieved by everybody pulling their weight, everybody coming together, everybody being part of the game. And one of the things that John Wooden used to make his players do is when they'd score a basket, they'd say thank you to the person who did the pass or did the rebound or whatever it was, so that you're acknowledging the part that everybody plays because everybody on the team is contributing to the success. As a manager or leader, you've got a problem to solve. You've got some delivery to make. You've got value to add to your customers. And the only way that we can really achieve those goals for the business, for us, for our team, is if everybody is operating at their best potential. Now, it's on you as a manager to try and find that and make greatness attainable by all. So lesson number two is all about how your example counts the most. If you're a leader or a manager in a team, your behaviors, the way that you carry yourself, the amount of effort and industriousness that you bring to work is setting an example. And it's the example that counts the most. Your behaviors will be mimicked and copied. They will proliferate through the business. I guarantee when I go into an organization that's got a toxic culture, it's because of toxic management and leadership behaviors, not people but behaviors. And that example that these people are setting is what everyone else thinks is the norm. So as a leader or a manager, you need to set that bar really high 
and you need to live up to it. And you need to demonstrate and show other people that you are a shining example of what they could be. Lesson number three is all about alertness. Now, this is about being aware of the situation and the context that you find yourself in. It's incredible to me that I go and work with some managers and leaders who do not understand the delivery through their team. You know, what are their team doing and how is it delivered? They're not aware of what other people in the organization are doing. They're not aware of the competitive landscape or the competition or actually what the customer really wants. And all of this comes from studying, it comes from looking, it comes from observing, Observing. It comes from being attentive. It comes from, you know, acknowledging everything that's going on around you. I was trying to think of more words to describe the same thing there. But you get the gist. This is about study. It's about watching. It's about observing. It's about noticing. And it's about taking that information and bringing it back to yourself, to your team, to the way that the work is delivered and making sure that you are constantly alert for changes, for things that are happening. This is about widening your awareness so you will be surprised less often. So lesson number four is all about becoming a teacher. Now John Wooden was famous for uh, basically being incredibly good at what he does, of course, leading teams and building amazing basketball teams and nurturing great talent through his college basketball team. But he saw himself as a teacher more than he saw himself as a leader or a manager. And that is a fundamental aspect to try and grab hold of as a modern manager or a modern leader in an organization is that we should be teaching people what we know. We should be educating educating people on how to get better, how to demonstrate the correct behaviors, how to understand work, how to study, how to problem solve, how to deal with conflict. We are teachers at heart. There is no point in acquiring a huge amount of information and a vast amount of knowledge and then not sharing that and contributing that back. Now, if we look at the role of manager or leader as a teacher, then we approach the world differently. We're not telling people to do stuff. We're not going to do things for people. We're going to help people get better. We're going to teach, we're going to enable, we're going to coach. And in the process, we are going to learn a huge amount about us and our ability to teach. And I always say that one of the best ways to learn a subject is to then teach it. Because you're going to think about those questions you're going to get asked. You're going to find those gaps in the knowledge. You're going to deeply understand whether or not you know that subject well enough to teach it. And as managers, every day, we should be taking an opportunity to coach, to teach, to improve the lives of others. Finally, lesson number five, and trust me, this was so hard coming up with these five, but these are the five that really play to the cultivated management philosophy. And this fifth one is about developing consistency. There's nothing more frustrating than, well, there's lots of things more frustrating than this, but you get the point. When you go into work and your manager one day is uh, performing and behaving in a certain way, and then the following day, they're behaving and performing in a completely different way. One day they're focused on one aspect of the work and then the next day they've shifted and moved on to something else. It's about that consistency, consistency of focus, consistency of behaviors, consistency of how you treat people. And the best leaders and managers are the people who are very, very consistent. You know where you stand with them. You know what they're going to be doing. You know where they're focusing their energy and attention. And that's a wonderful thing for your team, to have a manager and a leader who is consistent in their behaviors, their focus, and the way that they work with other people. So there you have it. They're the five lessons that I pulled out from this book. And like I say, I pretty much could have dipped this book in highlighter fluid and read it to you. Uh, but obviously, I'd probably get sued for that. And of course, that defeats the joy of you picking this book up and highlighting the things that are relevant to you. Now, of course, this book is a wonderful book from a leader in the world of basketball. But of course, there are leaders in every sport and every industry. So if basketball is not your thing, then go for something else. But trust me, this book is not really about basketball. This book is about management and leadership. One of my nine recommended reading books with good reason because it's just pure 
gold. Hope you've enjoyed the B-roll. I hope you've enjoyed it here at Crab Wood. I'll show you some gnarly footage of these trees. They're quite imposing, a little bit scary actually. With that weird noise behind me, I'm starting to get a little bit freaked out. I'm actually quite deep into the woods here. Um, there's also quite a lot of crime here, bizarrely enough. Winchester's quite a nice place to live, but there does seem to be a lot of breaking, so I'm fingers crossed. Hope my car's still there and it's all in one piece. Anyway, I am solo waffling as usual at the end of these videos. If you've enjoyed this, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Are you crazy? Have you not subscribed to this channel already? Are you a manager, leader, want to get better? Then I'm going to be sharing a weekly video with you. So subscribe, share it with your friends, share it with your manager, and I very much look forward to seeing you in the next video. First time.